Okay, hello and welcome to Dr. Baird's virtual accounting classroom. Okay, today we're going to be covering some very important things in accounting. We're going to talk about debits and credits. We're going to talk about analyzing and recording business transactions. And really, if you think about it, this is, is the meat and potatoes of accounting. It is it, it's the basics. Okay? We're going to set up and organize a chart of accounts. We're going to record transactions in a T account. We're going to, according to the rules of debit and credit, we're going to prepare a trial balance. We're going to prepare financial statements for the trial balance, which is super important because you want to know how well your business is doing, and you should be getting these financial statements every month. Okay? So, a business transaction is recorded in the accounting equation under a specific account. Different accounts are used for each subdivisions of the accounting equation. These right here are the categories. We have assets, liabilities, equity, expenses, and revenues. And these are the things we track throughout the business on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we make decisions about the business based on what's going on here. Okay? You need a way to record the increases and decreases because what's happening is we're taking money in from customers, which is revenue, and we're having expenses. Everybody and every company has expenses. And they go in these specific account categories. And then we keep them together in one place because we need them together in one place because we need to know what to do with the business on a month-to-month, -month, year to year basis. Also, we want to keep the IRS happy. Standard account, a formal account that includes columns for the date. Date is extremely important. Um, if you ever get audited, that's one of the first things you're going to look at is the date. Okay? The item, the posting reference, always put a posting reference. A posting reference is basically saying what you did. Um, because you won't remember in six months. Debits and credits, and debits and credits are really the basis of accounting, and these are things you really need to learn. Okay? Accounts have a separate form. We have to remember that. Each account. Each form contains all transactions affecting it. Everything in cash, in the cash account, is going to be um, a separate form. You're going to know the money that's coming in and the money that's going out. Okay? All forms kept together in a ledger. A ledger is book-like. Nowadays, the majority of people, it's all computerized. But still, it's a ledger. Okay? Each page contains one account. You'll have a cash account, you'll have accounts receivable, you'll have accounts payable, you'll have revenues, and then you'll have all your expenses itemized, okay, from salaries all the way down to utilities expense, okay, and you can see here, this is what it's going to look like, whether you're on a manual system, okay, or you're computerized, which I highly recommend you be computerized, this is how it's going to look, okay, on a consistent basis, okay? and this is very classic, and this goes back years and years and years. Okay? On the left side, you'll have debits. Okay? And on the right side, you'll have credits. Now, debits and credits do different things to different accounts. And we're going to talk about that. Okay? All T accounts. And you can notice here, it's kind of shaped in a T. And that's why they call it a T account. Okay? All T accounts have this structure. This is the basis of accounting. The left side, of course, is called the debit side, as I said, and the right side is called the credit side. Okay? Debit and credit indicates position only. The debit on the left, the credit on the right. Okay? Here's an example. The procedure used to balance an account is the same for all accounts. Okay? Now, we're going to assume this is cash. You can see here, on the 2nd of April, they deposited $5,000 to 
On the 20th of April, they deposited $600 for $5,600. Over here on the 3rd, they paid something at an expense of $400. And on the 25th, they had an expense of $500. You would subtract the $900 from the $5,600 for a balance of $4,700. So this balance at this date should match your bank account. Whatever you have in the bank, you should have $4,700. Okay? If you don't, if it doesn't match, you boo-booed someone. So you're going to have to go back and look to see where you made the mistake. Because at all times you want to know how much cash you have. That's everybody. Everybody right now, probably in the world, kind of knows what's in that bank account that they have. And businesses do. Add the items on the left side. This is called a foot or a subtotal. Okay, add the items listed on the right side, which are some of your foots, and then you're going to have your balance. And again, if it's cash, it should match what's in the bank. Okay, because that's really super important. Now, we're going to talk about recording transactions in T accounts, according to the rules of debit and credit. It's extremely important that you learn all the rules to the debit and credit. Okay. And this is a fantastic chart. And it basically tells you what a debit and a credit does to different categories. You can see here in assets, the debit makes them go up. The credit makes them go down. Liabilities, the credit makes it go up. The debit makes it decrease. In the capital account, credit makes it go up. The debit makes it go down. Withdrawals, the debit makes it go down. I'm sorry, up. And the credit makes it go down. In expenses, the debit makes it go up. The credit makes it go down. Okay. Why? I always say, because it is what it is. Okay. This has been going on forever and a day. It's not going to change. We just have to learn it. The normal balance, when they talk about normal balance, it's the account on the side that increases the category. For instance, the normal balance on assets is debit. The normal balance for liabilities is credit. Capital, the normal balance is credit. Withdrawals, the normal balance is debit. Revenue, the normal balance is credit, and expenses, the normal balance is debit. Now, for all you analytics, we love you, we need you, but don't overanalyze this because it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bother the process of you getting in there and learning this. Just accept it. It is what it is. Okay? The rules. Now, I like this one. I do, because it's simple, and it implements the KISS syndrome. Keep it short and simple, and that's what it does. But some folks will like this. Either way, as long as you learn it, fine. Okay. Accounts entered on the debit side of one account must be on the credit side of another account. You can never have a debit without a credit, or a credit without a debit ever. You've got to have, if you have a debit, you've got to have a credit. If you have a credit, you've got to have a debit. Because if not, it's going to unbalance everything. Okay? This ensures the accounting equation is in balance. You can have multiple debits with one credit. As long as the amounts are the same, they add up. That's fine. Because you can't have 1000 over here and 999 over here because it won't balance. It'll be off a dollar. So if you have $1,000 in debits, you've got to have $1,000 in credits. You can have multiple credits with one debit. Okay? You can have multiple debits with multiple credits. And really, in, in big businesses, this is normally what accountants do every day. Land book. <laughs> okay, this basically is just your standard chart of accounts. Okay? And assets 
usually in the hundreds, and you can see liabilities are in the 200s, owner's equity in the 300s, revenue in the 400s, expenses in the 500s. That's just how the IRS wants it. So that's what we're going to do. Okay? A lot of what we do is because of governmental agencies telling us this is how they want it. So we want to make sure we're in compliance. So that's why we do things this way. Okay? This is excellent. These are the five steps to analyzing each transaction. When you're first doing transactions, you should have this minimized. So you can bring it up in case you get stuck. After you do these transactions time and time again, you won't need this anymore. Okay? Step one, determine which accounts are affected. Exa example, you're having a transaction. Is cash involved? Is it accounts payable? Is it rent expense? Okay? And remember, a transaction always has and affects at least two accounts. Okay? Always. Determine which categories the accounts belong to. Is it an asset? If it's cash, it's an asset. Cash is the best asset. Okay? If it's accounts payable, it's a liability. Okay? If it's rent expense, well, it's an expense. Okay? So figure out where these accounts sit in the category. Determine whether the accounts increase or decrease. Example, if you receive cash, that account, of course, is going to increase. Okay, cash will go up. What do the rules of debit and credit say? Well, if I'm dealing with assets, the rules of debit and credit say if the assets go up, I have to debit. So you're going to debit that side. Okay. And what does the T account look like? It's not a bad idea to have a scrap piece of paper on the table beside you when you're doing these transactions and draw the T account and just post it there first. Look at it, see if it looks right. Place amounts into accounts either on the left or the right side depending on what the rules say. Is it a debit, is it a credit? What is it? <clears throat> this is excellent. Okay. Do not try to debit or credit an account until you go through the first three steps of the transaction analysis, and this is key. Because most of the time, if you don't go through these first, it's going to be wrong. And we don't want to do that. Okay, we want to make sure this is precise, it's accurate, and it's giving good information to the managers and leaders who are making decisions for the business. Okay. Here's an example. On August 28th, Mia Wong invests 6,000 cash and 200 of the office equipment in the business. Okay. Now she's done two things here. Now, this is kind of a story problem. What we're looking for here are key words. The key word here is invest. She's investing into the company. And this is her own money. So, what's going to happen here is cash is cash. We're going to have a debit to cash. But office equipment is also um, an asset. So we're going to put $200 in the debit. Okay? Now, she invested, so that's capital. So down here, we're going to add these two up, and the credit will be $6,200, because how do we make capital go up? We credit it. Okay? Do we balance? Yes. We have 6200 on the debit side, and we have 6200 on the credit side. We're done here. Okay? A transaction that involves more than one debit or more than one credit, okay? and it can. That's exactly what we just did. It's called double entry bookkeeping. Okay? You can see you had an entry here, and you had an entry here. You had two because you've got to balance. So that's double entry because she invested. This is the very first day of the business when she first started it. Okay? She has a law practice. She bought office equipment for cash, $500. Okay? We said office equipment is an asset because it is. All the office equipment that you use every day for your business 
is an answer. So, what do we do here? Well, we've got more office equipment. Office equipment is an asset. How do we make an asset go up? We debit. Okay? Well, we spent cash. So, we've got to make cash go down $500 because now we don't have the $6,000 anymore. We spent $500. Okay? Bought more office equipment on account for $300. Now, remember, when we look at these transactions, we're looking for keywords. The key word here is account. We bought it on account, which means no cash is transferred hands. No cash is transferred hands. So we're not going to be messing with the cash account. We charged it. <clears throat> so we've got more office equipment, right? Because it says we bought office equipment on account. So office equipment, since it's an asset, gets debited $300. Accounts payable gets credited $300 because we owe the money. Anything we owe is a liability. How do we make a liability go up? We credit. Okay? Why? Because it is what it is. That's just how it is. Okay? Do we balance? Yes. We've got 300 on the left side, 300 on the right side. <clears throat> Provided legal services for cash, $2,000. Now, Mia, she's in the business of being a lawyer. So this, when she provides some legal services, is revenue. And that's what she's trying to do. She's trying to make money, like all of us. So, providing legal services for cash, $2,000. So, cash is cash. Cash is an asset. How do we make an asset go up? We debit $2,000. But now we have a new, brand new account called legal fees. Anytime you see the word fees, that means revenue. How do we make a revenue account go up? We credit $2,000. So we've got $2,000 on the left side, $2,000 on the right side. We balance. We're good. Provided legal services on account, $3,000. Now, key word here, on account, $3,000. Okay? Somebody came in and they charged it somehow. We gave them credit. Okay? So, no cash transferred hands. Okay? But we see legal services. Anytime we see fees or services, that is revenue. So, accounts receivable, new account. New account. <clears throat> this means that we're going to receive money sometime in the future. We let somebody charge it. We gave them credit. Okay? So now they owe us that $3,000. We might have said net 10 days. In other words, you got to pay me in 10 days. Or net 30 days. you got to pay me in 30 days. So, $3,000 goes to accounts receivable. But, it's still revenue because it's legal services. And that's Mia's job. That's what she does. So, we're going to credit $3,000 to legal fees. Okay. And we balance. $3,000 on the left side, $3,000 on the right side. Receive $900 cash from clients for services rendered previously on account. Okay. Well, <clears throat> this person charged $3,000 and we gave them credit. They came in and they paid $900 of it. So, since they paid the $900, they no longer owe us $3,000. They owe us less than that. And here we go. Cash is cash. It's easy. $900. Gets, gets debited in cash because how do you make an asset go up? You debit. Accounts receivable is going to go down $900 because this person or the company or whoever paid $900 of the $3,000 they owe us. So they only owe us $2,100 now. Okay? Paid salaries expenses for $700. Evidently, Mia hired either a receptionist or a legal assistant or something. Paid them $700. Okay? 
This is an expense for the business, and we can write that off. So, we're going to have a salaries expense for $700, because how do we make an expense go up? We debit $700. And cash for $700. We paid this person $700. Of course, everyone wants cash for the job they do. So we have to credit cash because cash is an asset. How do we make an asset go down? We credit. Paid rent expense, $400. Same thing. Okay? Your landlord wants money. So it's the same thing. We have rent expense, $400. This is rent for the business. So of course we can take it. So we have rent expense, $400 debit, because debit is how we make an expense go up. And then we have cash, $400, because of course the landlord wants cash. So cash will go down $400. Cash again is an asset. How do we make it go down? We got to credit it. <clears throat> Received a bill for advertising expense. But we're going to pay it next month. We're going to pay it in May, or whatever the next month is, okay, for $200. So we haven't paid it yet. But the rule is you have to account for expenses the day you have them. You, you can't push this forward or backwards. If it happens today, you got to account for it today. So it's going to look like this. We still count it as an advertising expense because it happened this month, $200. But now we have an account payable to Facebook or, or Instagram or wherever we advertise for $200. Now we're going to pay next month. Okay? This happens all the time because as we get established, okay, companies are going to be more willing to give us time. Pay us in 10 days. Pay us in 30 days. Okay? Things like that. Okay. Mia Wong went through cash for personal use, $100. Now, you've got to remember something. Mia Wong is the owner. She can take out as much money as she wants because it's her money. Okay? So if she's withdrawing $100 to pay something that's personal. It has nothing to do with the company. We do not want to include personal expenses in company expenses. It's illegal. Okay? So what we got here is Mia Wong withdrew $100. And the reason why we keep track of it is because she's going to be responsible for taxes on this in her personal life because she withdrew it to pay bills but it's still seen as personal income by the IRS. And then over here, of course, cash. How do we make withdrawals go up? We debit it. How do we make cash go down? We credit it because it's an asset. Okay. Now, this is something, if you're computerized, you'll get, it. you'll get every day you can get it. And this is a good thing to do. And this shows you all the transactions you did for the day, the month, the week, you can actually do it any way you want. If you have a lot of transactions, I would suggest you, you print this out every day. Because, it, because it's a good way to check. It's a good way to check if, if, you, if you made a mistake somewhere or if something looks strange. It's a good way to just check. Because we want this right. We certainly don't want to give our leaders or our managers something that's not correct. Okay? Because that won't go over well. All right? And you can see here, we started out with cash. And it shows you everything we did in cash. The money we collected, the money we paid out. Accounts receivable, we had that one account, 3000 They paid 900 on it. Okay? And we want to make sure these accounts receivables are correct because if you want to get a customer upset with you, get, get what they owe wrong. Okay, office equipment you can see. 
accounts payable, we do owe some money. You can see Mia Wong Capital, she invested 6200 at the very beginning. That didn't change. <clears throat> she didn't invest anymore. That's all she invested for this time period. She withdrew $100. She had legal fees. Remember, fees are services automatically. That's revenue. You have 2000 and 3000 She had salaries expense of $700. She had a rent expense of $400. And then she had an advertising expense of $200. This is very valuable, and you can, if you're computerized, you can print this out every day if you want. And a lot of companies do, and we suggest it, because it gives you an idea of what's coming in and what's going out. Okay? So now we're going to talk about the trial balance. Now, you have to understand something. The trial balance is just that. It's a trial. It's something temporary. Basically, the trial balance is something to look at to make sure that you balance and that everything was posted right. So, it's a list of any balances of all the accounts in the ledger. Remember, the ledger is just all of the accounts, from cash all the way to expenses. Okay? That's what it is. It's everything you've done in cash and a balance, and so on and so forth. Okay? Total debits should equal total credits. You have to balance. If it doesn't balance, you're going to have to go back here and see what you did. Okay? List in same order as they appear in the chart of accounts. And usually cash is first. Okay? You do assets and then liabilities, and then you do owner's equity, revenue, and then expenses. <clears throat> And there is another summary of the transactions. And what we're doing here is we're pulling the balances. Okay? All the balances for all these accounts. Okay? Once we go, yeah, it, it looks right. We're good. We pull them and put them here. Now, this mostly is an internal document. Now, it doesn't mean that the IRS can't come in and ask you for this. But normally it's an internal document. It's for you. If you're doing the bookkeeping, this is for you to look at one last time. <clears throat> and go, yeah, that's right. And you'll see here, the debits equal the credits. And that's something really important. Because again, if it doesn't match, you got to go back here. Because you, you made a mistake somewhere. <clears throat> and that happens. Because even a small business can be doing hundreds of transactions a day. Now, from the trial balance, this, now, we're going to do our financial statements. Okay. The financial statements are extremely important because we make decisions as managers on what direction to take the company. Plus, we need them in case if we go for a loan, we're going to need, we're going to need them because the bank or shards are going to go, let me, let me see the financial statements. So now we're going to prepare them from this trial balance. Okay? When the trial balance is complete, the total of all the debits must equal the total of all the credits. First one you do is the income statement. Now, the income statement is super important because as a manager, this is the one you're going to see the most. Especially if you're at the department level or the office level. You're going to see this every month. Okay? The first report to make is the income statement, which is made up of only revenue and expenses. This is how much money you made. Or the classic bottom line, how well are we doing. Okay? Second one is the statement of owner's equity. This is the second report to prepare, which shows how to calculate a new figure for capital. What am I worth? Income statement. What money did I make? Statement of owner's equity. What am I worth? Balance sheet. The third report, which lists out each asset, liability, and it gives the new figure for capital. Okay? And this is my financial position. And, and really what it, financial position means, very, very much simplified, is if... I closed the business, could I sell all my assets 
and pay off all my liabilities. And that's what banks want to know. That's what sharks want to know. Okay? And this is a great, great chart. Okay? As you can see, it's the steps that you have to do to prepare these three statements. Now, interestingly, the first one is the income statement, and that's the one up at the top. And that's going to be revenue minus expenses equal net income. So all you're going to do is pull legal fees, all your expenses, and we'll move them up here. That's your first income statement, done. If you're computerized, it does it automatically. Okay? Next one, statement of owner's equity. And you're going to pull capital. Okay? You're going to pull withdrawals. All right? Then you've got to have to pull the net income. Whatever the net income up here is, you pull it down and put it here. Now, the reason why you do that is because net income or net loss makes you richer or poorer. And we said standard of voters' equity is how much you're worth. So we pull it down there. <clears throat> we add and subtract as we need to do. And that right there is our new number in capital. Last but not least is the balance sheet. I want to make sure everybody can see. <clears throat> and the balance sheet basically is, again, liabilities, assets, liabilities, and the new number for capital. And you list them in that order. Assets first, then liabilities, and then the new number for capital. And this shows your financial position. Again, could you sell all your assets pay off all your liabilities, and maybe walk away from the business with a little bit of money. That's key. Or if you go to the bank, they're going to want to see this, because the bank, if you default, they want to make sure they can get their money back by, liqui by liquidating your assets. Because that's just the way it is. Okay? So, the chart of account aids in locating and identifying accounts quickly. If you're computerized, it'll show you. Most important thing, if you're just starting, remember those rules of debit and credit. And as you're doing these transactions, the two charts I showed you, the one showing you what debit and credit does to the different categories, and the five steps, keep those. Keep those really, really good. Okay? Um, also, a transaction that involves uh, more than one debit or more than one credit is called a compound entry. And many times, especially in big businesses, that's what you're going to see. Okay? Um, assets, withdrawals, and expenses increase when you put amounts on the left or debit side of these accounts. The accounting system balances because liabilities, capital, and revenue increase when you put amounts on the right or credit side of these amounts. The increased side of any account, of course, will be the normal balance as we discussed. Footings are just the total debit side, total credit side. Then at the bottom, you'll have the balance. Okay. And then, of course, the trial balance is an internal document that lists all the accounts and assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenues, and expenses. And it's a check and balances for you to make sure it's correct. And it must balance. The debits have to equal the credits. Okay. Once the trial balance is complete, then we create our financial statements. First one, income statement. Okay. Revenues minus expenses equals net income. Okay. Second one, statement of owner's equity. What is my worth? You're going to have in there capital, which is investments, withdrawals, and whatever net income or net loss you made for the month or the period. Okay. And lastly, the balance sheet, okay, which is assets, liabilities, and your new amount for capital. That's going to go on to the next period. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, if you have questions or concerns, please contact.